a sun-splashed September afternoon here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we are happy to bring you coverage of the inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open here at the Plaza Hotel and Casino at 1 Main Street, Las Vegas. Hey, everybody, welcome to Las Vegas State Bench. Hanging out with Melissa McCur McCurley and Mark Rennison. And uh, guys, we're excited to be here and be a part of this tournament as pickleball continues to grow and yet another major tournament added to the schedule. Oh, absolutely. It's been a great week. We started with an amateur event the first part of the week and then are going on with the pros today. Mark, uh, you've seen this sport really grow and to see a, a tournament like this with a large purse for the pros, it really is impressive. What a thrill. This is one of the richest pickleball tournaments in the sport right now. And so to come to such a beautiful place in Las Vegas here at the Plaza Hotel is a real treat for spectators and players. Yeah, this, the purse of $25,000 vaults it right to the top of pickleball tournaments that are being played around the country right now. Over 300 players, not just from the United States, but four countries represented in this tournament here. We are excited to get the coverage underway. Let's play some pickleball here in Sin City. Don't go anywhere. Live action coming your way next. Stop me if you've heard this before, but it's going to be Kyle Yates and Ben Johns against Callan Dawson and Tyler Lung. A match that we saw earlier today here in our live coverage, and it was decidedly in favor of Yates and Johns. They won 11-4, 11-6 in straight sets. They sent Dawson and Loom to the opportunity bracket, and they made the most of that opportunity, Melissa McCurley, because they fought their way back through the opportunity bracket, and now they are playing for gold. Yeah, it's a, so this is an example. You know, we did see these guys earlier today where Callan and Tyler did lose to Ben and Kyle, dropped down to the opportunity bracket, and then fought their way back for the opportunity to still win the gold here on championship court at the Las Vegas Open. And we are live and underway. Yates and Johns in the near court. Loong and Dawson in the far court. Loong in the green colored shirt. And the point here to get things started. So an early 1-0 advantage. So it's gonna be interesting what, what we see here from Yates and Johns early on. Uh, whether they use the power game. Initially, we saw Kyle uh, in the match earlier today, we saw Kyle hitting a lot of third shot drives going hard early on in the match, whereas we saw Ben using more of those soft rollers as third shot drops. So uh, we're going to see. Yeah. I think, I think it's fair to expect that from Loon and uh, Dawson, we're not going to see many third shot drives at all. And this quartet earlier today, as you might expect with the men's doubles division, they produced the best point we've seen all tournament long. It was impressive. It sure was. I know we didn't get a count, but it, it felt like at least 50. Yeah, I said 40 to 50. Yeah, the, the ball just crossed the net continuously and in all different form and fashion. Three, one, one. And it's 3 one, one. Lung and Dawson jumping out to the early advantage. Their largest lead in the first match earlier today was at 4-3 in game number two. So this is uncharted waters for them against Yates and Johns today. Yeah, and, and this is what I was t talking about a little bit earlier, too, how then Yates and Johns, right, they uh, won that match. They went then and sat waiting to see who was going to come get to the final here while Tyler Lung and Callan Dawson continued to play in the opportunity bracket. So they've stayed warm. And so it would be very interesting to see if that uh, staying warm will give them an advantage here. Yeah, you'd think with the heat, it would be advantageous to sit and hydrate, but sometimes you sit around and, and you, you don't stay fresh. Right, yeah, absolutely. 4-1-2 now. I don't know, we've been so busy over here at the booth. I wonder how many of these players in between matches are hitting the pool. We're here on the fifth floor of the Plaza Hotel. There's a beautiful pool right beside the pickleball courts. I'm petitioning for next year that uh, we maybe move the booth over to the pool. <laughs> I don't know that we have quite the vantage point that we have right now. That we wouldn't. They've got all kinds of things over there. They've had live entertainment. There's a bar. There's uh, food. There's 
uh, some gambling tables, there's a hot tub. I mean, it doesn't really get any better than right here on the roof at the Plaza Hotel for pickleball and whatever else you might want to do. A vicious backhand there by Dawson. And that gets the serve back to Leung Dawson with the 4-1 advantage. Yeah, so. There's another point, yeah. wow. Yeah, Leung was able to hold off on that and let it sail wide. 5-1-1. One, one. Make it 6-1-1, one, one, and certainly not the start that Yates and Johns were expecting coming out here in the championship match. No, no, it's like they, they've not just uh, kind of woken up here yet. Now, Melissa, because this is a double elimination format, and we're probably getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but should Loong and Dawson be able to win this first best two out of three, they would go to a tiebreaker, one game up to 15 win by two. That's right, they sure would. So at that point, both teams are considered to have had one loss, and mm. then that's why they uh, play the tiebreaker. This point is contending for point of the day. Wow, what concentration there by Tyler Lung. Did you see that laser down the line? Yeah, so I think one of the things that um, the players at home can take when they watch pros like this play is they always expect their opponents to hit hard. They never expect a soft shot. And by doing that, if the ball does come fast, you're ready for it. And if it doesn't come fast, if it's slow, if it's a dink, whatever, you're wrong. But that means that you have more time than you expected. So just watch how calm and composed these players are when you get into those bang, bang rallies or when the, the what looks like will be dink ends up being a fastball at you. The players are expecting that and they're ready for it. Guys, Steve Vaza on Facebook chiming in, wondering what the payout is for the gold medal men's winners. And I don't know the specific number, maybe you do, Melissa, but I do know the total purse here at this Las Vegas Pickleball Open is $25,000, one of the richest tournaments currently being played. Yeah, uh, it is. And as far as the prize break uh, money out, yes, I certainly do know, but I'll take this opportunity to let people know that they can also find that information on pickleballtournaments.com and click tournaments this week and more info for the Las Vegas Open. You will see the prize money breakout by each division right there on the welcome page of the Las Vegas Open on pickleballtournaments.com. One, nine, one. Yates and Johns in a serious hole here in game one and make it one, nine, two. Yates will be the second server. Wow, this would create so much confidence for Loon and Dawson if they can win this one, and not just win it, but win it handily, serving at 9-1 here. 9-2-1. It's uh, still 9-1-1. Nine, nine, one, one. Nine one one. Oh, we had the. Don't, don't throw us under the bus, babe. They're trying to. They're trying to mess with us now. I think. <laughs> Nine one two. Uh, Callan Dawson I serving. I just to tell you how wonderful it is to have a production truck during these broadcasts. Yes, are, it's fantastic. They are wonderful. No, they honestly, we work with a great crew, and uh, it's <laughs> it's a pleasure to have these guys here, and. Kudos to everybody involved in the broadcast because the reviews on Facebook have been fantastic. People, people impressed with the quality of the broadcast. Yeah, the quality of the broadcast. I know we're laughing and kind of making fun and having fun with it, but the folks behind the scenes are really what makes this, this happen. Wow, how about this exchange back and forth? And wow. then finally won on the backhand by Dawson. That was impressive. That was a great head-to-head -head rally there. That's one of the best I know that we've seen. Fantastic. That'll be one of the things when you look at the pros when they're practicing. That's one thing that they'll do a lot of those quick reflex volleys. Game point here. Is they'll get close together, 14 feet apart, 15 feet apart, the distance basically of the 
kitchen line of the kitchen line. And they'll just hit these balls hard, hard, hard at each other, getting used to both sending that kind of speed and also handling it. And speaking of views, the last update that I got, we have uh, over 17,000. Wow. Feeds uh, that have gone out through Facebook of today's broadcast. Steve Brudvik wanting to know, have Lung and Dawson played together before? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure that they have. I you would have to go back and look at uh, some of the, the history to see in which, in which. Uh, there we go. That's a game in right which there. They have both Callan and Tyler both have brothers that they've uh, each played with. Well, Lung and Dawson, they jump out of the gates quickly and draw first blood 11-1 decisive in game number one here of the men's final on center court in Las Vegas. We'll take a, a quick break. Game number two coming your way after this timeout from Sin City. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown, Miller Lite, and by Highlands. Well, we told you the Plaza Hotel is the place to be, whether it's 4th of July, St. Patrick's Day, or just a Hawaiian luau, they have a little culture for everybody's tastes here in Las Vegas. We've had a lot of fun being here and the weekend just getting started. Although, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be a pickleball tournament without Dave Weinbach. And, and Dave is chiming in now on our Facebook live stream. He says, hi, Melissa. Yes, Apparently, hi. Mark and I are chopped liver. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Dave and I have a tradition and we take a, a picture at every pickleball tournament that we're at. So I guess I'm gonna have to Photoshop him into <laughs> to this one. Dave, we miss you out here. A little bit surprised he wasn't in the field for the inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open. I know. I just saw him at the Texas Open a couple of weekends ago. So I know he'd be at all of them if he could. But he does have a, a business that he owns and a family that he enjoys back in Wisconsin. Speaking of Wisconsin, yes. I know. Yeah, I know. The Badger's cold. He's wishing he was here, too. Well, I'm getting ready to head up to that neck of the woods pretty soon with the Timberwolves season getting started soon. So I'm mm. not really looking forward to the cold. <laughs> I bet you're not. Hope you got a great jacket. And Dave asked about the win. We have had no win, Dave. Uh, this is four days in a row. It's been absolutely wonderful here at Las Vegas. The Plaza Hotel has been a great host to the inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open. It's just been a wonderful atmosphere. 1-1-2, one, one, and then Johns promptly hits it into the net. So... 1-1-1 one, one, one is the serve switches sides. So Ben and Kyle need to be a little bit careful here um, that Loon and Dawson don't get on a bit of a run. Uh, you know, you can see Ben and Kyle laughing when he missed that last serve. And yeah, that's uncharacteristic of someone like, like Ben, but they gotta be careful that they don't let this um, go badly for them quickly. They're already down a game. So side out, serve goes back to Yates and Johns who have not led in this championship match. They won in the winner's bracket final against Lung and Dawson and straight sets 11-4, 11-6. Yeah, but uh, certainly came out a little bit flat here in the opening game, you know, going down 11 or 1-11. What do you think, Mark? What do you think uh, Ben and Kyle said to said to each other in between the games coming into game two? Well, I think they said to each other, we can't make nine forced, unforced errors and expect to win. Kyle just noticed, Kyle thinks that Tyler Loon right now uh, was in the kitchen, didn't get himself reestablished. You could see him looking at the ref, uh, but it's a moot point. He won that point. Yeah, that is already nine unforced errors for Johns and Yates compared to just five for Dawson and Loon. By the way, how much has the sun now changed just in the last couple of minutes, finally dipping down now, and it won't be long before we're fully in the shade again here on championship court. Yeah, and so Dave, Dave Weinbach's telling us uh, that he'll be here next year. So a uh, great, great, oh, great. Oh, what a We'd shot. To have you here. How about Loon going between the legs on the return? Mm. 
you know what, there's a bit of a miscommunication there. Tyler got back. You know, often when you see players hit that th that tweener, we call it, uh, it's more of a hot dog shot. In that case, there really was no other chance here. Watch, he had no way to get around it. A good through the leg shot, just couldn't hold on to win the point. So we on to the second serve. And Dawson hits it into the net, so make it 4-1. Four, one. Four, one, and you saw Kyle Yates, so you wonder if that did get caught up in the sun, the way he expressed uh, some frustration there, looked up at the sky. We do have line judges for this match. All line judges are also certified referees. By the way, we do want to give a shout out to all the volunteers here at the Las Vegas Pickleball Open who have been generous with their time to help get this tournament on board. Yeah, we couldn't do it without them, that's for sure. And here on center court, refereeing this match is Mr. Ken Schoonover. He's out of St. George, Utah. So there's an example of what's, what's different between top level players and others. Dawson was beat by the lob, he went back. And what you'd see for most recreational players is that they, they'd either send a lob back in return, which probably gets smashed, or they would just drive it. But what did Dawson do, and what do all the pros do most of the time? When they're in trouble, they don't drop it. They don't drive it, they don't lob it, they play a drop, which neutralizes their opponents just the way that Dawson did there. Four, two, one after the side out. Oh. And Loong hits it long. Oh, Kyle does not like that call. They called it in. Looked like it was going to be out. You're right. Yates caught off guard by that call. Yeah, line judge is holding firm to his call. Kyle has been known to, on occasion, have a disagreement with a referee or two. <laughs> we talked earlier about Dawson and Loong and how much they played together. Of course, Yates and Johns are very good friends, and they've been playing together for a long time. Probably for, for all the matches they played together, they played exponentially more hours together practicing their craft. Yeah, I would probably say that, because, I mean, really, Ben's been on, what, the scene a couple of years now, so, and Kyle's been on the scene for five years, so... Kyle has uh, certainly been around a lot longer. In those two years, Ben has grown what seems like 18 inches. <laughs> Remember when I first came and saw Ben a couple years ago? Um, you know, you compare that to what you see now. He's just he's big, he's tall, he's strong. Uh, he was a threat back then, and he's even more of a threat now. Yeah, I just watched him uh, win the Tournament of Champions singles finals against Tyson McGuffin, and that is no easy task to do. Yeah, he and, he and Tyson uh, have a great ongoing battle from one tournament to the next. It seems like could go either way. Um, we're really lucky to, to see such high-level player in both the men's and women's side. So 4-4-1, four, four, and now 4-4-2. Four, four, We were talking earlier about uh, the production truck and all the people behind the scenes. It takes 18 production people to bring this live feed to everyone that's having the opportunity to enjoy it today. So thanks to everybody that makes this possible for viewers around the world to enjoy at home or wherever you might be enjoying this broadcast. I also want to thank Jonathan Jassel, who's the CEO of the Plaza Hotel and Casino, and Grant Garcia, the director of the Las Vegas Pickleball Open, who had the vision to put on this tournament and decided, you know what, we're not only going to put on the tournament, we're going to go big. We're going to provide the live coverage. They really want to make this tournament one of the signature events on the annual tour for pickleball players. Yeah, absolutely. Even for the amateur matches that went for the first three days, every one of those matches were, were ref with a certified referee during the week. 
and uh, the tournament management is all done professionally. Mm. Dawson trying to go around the post, but miss hits it. So you're right, they went big in every aspect. They didn't cut any corners anywhere. And uh, what they did in creating this championship court is gonna be special for years to come. One of 13 courts here on the pool deck at the Plaza Hotel and Casino. Any word on whether we've moved the broadcast booth to the pool yet? <laughs> Steve, Steve on Facebook was uh, suggesting maybe in between the pool and the bar. Yeah, yeah, well, you never know when another remodel might happen. Yeah, but no, it has been, uh, it's been a pleasure to work here with the crew at the Plaza Hotel and Casino. It's a first-rate event for sure, and this being the inaugural one, I know uh, I, for one, am looking forward to coming back in the future. First-rate facility, first-rate event. Uh, everything about this has been a fantastic experience. And if you're not here in Las Vegas, we're glad you're watching the live stream, but whether you come out here as a player or as a spectator next year, Put this on your calendar for next September. There is uh, no reason to not be in Las Vegas in late September. It is beautiful weather. It is great pickleball. Tyler Loon looks so calm right now. Look at him just sort of standing there, spinning his paddle. It's not what you would expect when you're up um, a game in a bit against players of the caliber of Johns and Yates. And they, so. Johns and Yates are closing the gap now, 6-7-2. Yeah, and, and this is, uh, it's Marion Pacella. Uh, hi, Marion, this is Melissa. They're uh, looking for you to talk about Callan's grip. I know you talked about it early in the broadcast. You also talked about it at the U.S. Open when we saw him play there. Yeah, well, you know, it's possible that not everyone's been watching a stream for the last four hours. Huh. Um, so Callan Dawson here uh, with the, the pink and black paddle, you can see that he holds quite far up on the handle, almost up near the paddle face. And um, that's sometimes referred to as a ping pong grip. Um, and it's an unusual grip. It's, it's one that none of the other three players on the court are using. By shortening the, by holding further up on the handle, you essentially shorten the paddle. When you shorten the paddle, you make it a little more maneuverable and easier to control, which is really great in situations like this where you're playing soft shots, playing these dinks that need to be very precise. The downside is you have a little bit less reach because now you've created a shorter paddle. And you also have a little bit less leverage. So when you do try to hit hard, it becomes a little bit harder than if you were holding further down. But it's a trade-off that uh, Callan's willing to make, and he does it quite effectively. Yeah, he volleys quite effectively with that grip as well. Yeah, you'll sometimes see, though, that on balls that you can tell he's trying to put away, balls that are a bit higher volleying, um, that sometimes he can't quite generate the power to, to win the point easily. So um, he, it's super when he plays drops, like you're going to see here. He does it very effectively in a dinking situation. Um, but uh, a little bit less reach, I'm attempted around the post there. A little bit less reach is, um, is a drawback. Some so good action there, and a break to serve. So 8-5-2 now. And going back to your point with the way that Dawson holds the paddle, Mark, bottom line is if it works for you and it's effective, then, then go with it. You said as a coach, you, you have three things you look at in your criteria of assessing how someone holds the paddle. Yeah, just in technique in general. You know, you want technique that works. If I'm trying to put the ball here, can the, my, the technique I'm using let me do it? You want technique that is safe, that it's not going to put extra stress on your body, and you want technique that you can build on over time. So as your game advances, your technique will let you do that. Time out here in game number two with Yates and Johns up 8-5. We're going to take a break as well. Stay with us from Las Vegas. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown by Miller Lite and by Franklin, the X-40, the official ball of the Las Vegas Pickleball Open. Back here in Las Vegas, where we got a good one going in the men's final, and you're taking a look at some of the rodeo events taking place here in Las Vegas. They really have everything and anything here at the Plaza Hotel, from rodeo to pickleball to luau's. 
they have a little bit of everything. They're live entertainment, uh, gambling by the pool, gambling in the casino itself. They've got several great restaurants here, too. They've also now got a show here. Yeah, Mob they, Story, which yeah. is fantastic. Uh, took that in last night. The singing, the dancing, just uh, really uh, the story. Very, yeah. very riveting throughout. Yeah, it's something that I'm going to have to see. I'm going to have to come up back up to Vegas. I live down in Surprise. It's about a five-hour drive to come back up. Uh, you could you could maybe squeeze that in before you're ziplining tonight. <laughs> I guess so. I'm looking forward to that ziplining, though. It's quite some adventure. I hear you're, you're doing it as well. Doing it a little bit later than you, but, yes, it should be a lot of fun. I feel like someone should get some video of that and put that on the Pickleball Channel Facebook page. Yeah, that sounds that is great. <laughs> Maybe the Third Shot Sports Facebook page will have some live action of you guys on the zip line. I hope it's better than the last live action you got of me. <laughs> I think I crashed into a fence. That, that is true. It was, it was a, I would call it a dive. It was a dive <laughs> into the fence. So game number two has gotten tight here. 8-7. Mm. I'd make it 9-7. That's an example where... Um, we talked before about the pros expecting the ball to come fast, and there's no way that players would be able to handle a shot like that unless they were looking for it, right? And uh, Ben Johns did a great job of receiving a fastball and counterattacking with one of his own. That was a great example of both teams sort of patiently waiting, sending each other balls that can't really be attacked, patiently waiting for that ball that's elevated just slightly, and then you can hit hard and still have a chance of keeping the ball in play. Mm, that's an indecision by Dowson, and he paid a price. Yeah, he was kind of got caught in no man's land there. Kyle Yates taking advantage. Just looking at some of our viewers, Stephanie Lane watching. Lucy Kovalova asks, uh, watching as well. Hope you ladies can make it to the Las Vegas Open next year. I mean, this is really uh, another special event. They've gone all out here and really made it a, a great players event. Dawson hits it wide. I feel like Lucy and Stephanie would love to spend a weekend in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Mr. Byron Fresso. One of our top, top referees in the game is watching live as well. He's asking about the zip lining. Yes, sir. We are zip lining tonight right over Fremont Street. Bucket list item. Ben John and Kyle Yates are at 15 unforced errors in this match compared to just 12 from Loon. And Dawson. How many of those Chet. unforced errors were in game one, though? They've really cleaned it up here in they game have, two. They have, yeah. They've, they've, been, uh, they've been around, I think it was just 12 in game number one and three since then. Um, thanks to Chad Edwards, who's been doing such a great job of our stats keeping. Yes, thank you, Chad. Chad Appreciate it, you. Chad is no slouch on the pickleball court himself, both as a player and as one of the coaches at and US Open Pickleball Academy. There's the game, is that shot just grazed the line. So 11-7, Yates and Johns take game number two. So for the first time today, we're gonna go to a third and decisive game here in the men's gold medal match. One more look at it. And it did just graze that back line. Time out here in Vegas. We'll be back with game number three after this quick break. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown. Miller Light and by Head. Back here at the Plaza Hotel and Casino, of course, nothing says party more than New Year's Eve, right? I mean, St. Patrick's Day is great, 4th of July is great, but New Year's Eve in Las Vegas, that is something special, and it's even better here at the Plaza Hotel and Casino. Can't imagine too, better, too many places better to be. How about Loon with the impressive shot there to start game number three? Yeah, there's no doubt that these guys want to be, be uh, pushing this to a tiebreaker game for sure. So if you're just joining us,
This is the winner's bracket, or the, I should say the gold, gold medal match, match, but because of the fact that in the winner's bracket final, Johns and Yates won, they would have to be defeated in two matches in order to not take the gold. So they would, in essence, have to lose two consecutive games here. That's correct. If they were to lose this third game here of the 2 of 3 to 11, then this will be, it would be pushed to a tiebreaker game in which they'd play 1 to 15, win by 2. And then the winner of that ultimately would take the men's doubles open gold medal and prize money from the first inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open here at the Plaza Hotel and Casino in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. Just right at the end of Fremont Street, the famous Fremont Street. Wow, and Tyler Wing, he is just really laser focused in right. this game. Yeah, if I was Ben and Kyle, I would do my best to stay away from him for a while. Not yeah. because Callan Dawson is playing poorly, but because lately um, Tyler has really been picking up some momentum here with overhead smashes and putaways like we just saw. So expect to see them keep it away from Tyler for a little bit here. Oh. That's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Callan was just sitting on that, and he was, he was ready. 3-0-2. So three zero two. And now zero three one as Yates will take over the serve. Zero three one. Zero playing out here. See what happens. Ooh. Two All bounces. Right. Wow, what a point that was. That was an excellent point. I'm just waiting for somebody to blink there and a little bit of blink gets the ball up uh, too you know, high and then a little net help there. Yeah, you know, often when I'm coaching, I have people ask me, so if I want to advance, if I want to become a, an advanced player, what is it that I need to do? And it's not that you've got to have better put away shots or it's not that you've got to hit a great serve or a great return. What you need to do is to be able to be consistent, to hit a, not just one good shot or two good shots in a row, but to be able to do it again and again and again and again. And that's why you see these players have such long rallies like we've seen, right? It's because they're so consistent here. They're steady. It's repeatable what it is that they're doing. And do you, you can put pressure on your opponents if you are that steady. So Mark, do you think that consistency comes from just a lot of, of play of pickleball? Or do you think these players are actually drilling and taking practice time in no, between it's, tournaments? No, it's deliberate practice. Look, you'll get a little bit better if you just spend time on the court playing matches. But you'll get a lot better and a lot better more quickly if you're putting out, if you're going out there and doing focused training, focused practicing, seeing with your partner if you can hit not just 50 dinks in a row, but 50 quality dinks in a row that wouldn't be attacked. And these guys are spending um, more time uh, doing training, or I'd say at least as much time training as they are playing matches. Well, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, Kyle Yates has said numerous times that drilling is as important to him as, as playing, so he does try to practice as much as he plays. Yeah, and, and one of the things that's important, um, and we talk about this a little bit with a project we just launched called Pickleball Coaching International, but one of the things that's important is that you practice with a, a consequence. So look, right now, if these guys blow it, if they miss a shot, if they hit a bad ball, there's a consequence, right? They lose the point. And often when people train, um, they don't train with consequences. If they blow it or they miss a shot, there's nothing lost. And what happens when you do that is that, that feels very different. The pressure that these guys have right now when they're playing points is very different. And so it's important that when people are out there training, um, that they're training where there's some sort of consequence if they don't perform whatever they're supposed to do. And where can people learn more of that kind of information, Mark? Well, so Pickleball Coaching International is a new project that we just launched. For anyone who's instructing pickleball, whether it's on a volunteer basis or part-time or even people who want to be professional coaches, uh, this is full of resources for uh, pickleball instructors. Uh, pickleballcoachinginternational.com. Great, great, thank you. 
So 2-4-1 as Yates and Johns get the serve back. They would like to just end this in this third game and not have to go to a tie-break game. Second serve. And we'll go to Johns now for the second serve. 2-4-2. Tyler is so good at those overhead smashes not just because he can hit with power, which we've seen a few times, he can play great angles like we saw there. And he's, um, he's not just tall, but he jumps really well, so it's so tough to lob over him. Yeah, and that was perfectly placed as well. And the unforced error there. And Mark, someone asking you earlier on the Facebook stream to kind of clarify the difference between an error and an unforced error. Yeah, I mean, it's, mm, I wouldn't say it's black and white. The way that, um, that we often talk about in the coaching world is, look, if it's a shot that you should make, if you feel bad that you missed that shot, if you think, shoot, that was a makeable ball, like what we just saw there from Callum, that's an unforced error. A forced error would be a ball that, yes, you hit the ball last and it went out, but there's a reason it went out. Your opponents hit hard, your opponents hit low, your opponents made you run, and it's a ball that you think, you know, that really is a ball I should be making. So it's a... Uh, Determining the difference between uh, an unforced error and just a regular error is more of an art than a science, I'd say. But Chad Edwards is doing a great job of it. And um, I misspoke earlier before our commercial break. Uh, Chad is one of the coaches at Peak Performance Pickleball uh, in Bonita Springs, Florida. Point. Along, of course, with his wife, Simone Jardim, who will be coming up. Uh, she'll be playing her own match later on tonight. Who, who's that? Simone. Who? who? <laughs> yes, we've never heard of Simone Jardine. <laughs> all right, Melissa, you got me. Okay, you got all me. Right, She'll all be right. teamed with CCS. <laughs> yes, she will. Coming up right after this match. My mom has also been watching the live feeds this afternoon. She's normally here at tournaments helping me out, but she had an opportunity to go to Hawaii. So. <laughs> well, that's not too shabby. What is it, about 240 right now in Hawaii? Yeah, well, she, she's back now. She just got back when I was heading this direction. So, um, but anyway, had a, had a good time. So she'll have to make it next year. 4-4-2. Four, four, two. Four, four, two. Dave Benz, Melissa McCurley, and Mark Renison here with you on Championship Court at the Plaza Hotel and Casino in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. The inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open. We've had exclusively on our coverage today men's and women's doubles. Tomorrow we will turn our attention to mixed doubles. And Melissa, all four of these men on the court right now will also be participating in the mixed doubles tomorrow. They sure will. Uh, play will start at 9 a.m. tomorrow. I believe our coverage here begins at 12.30 Pacific time. I just want to also let folks know that uh, Facebook cuts cut the stream at four hours uh, today. So it did have to be restarted. So I um, just want to let folks know that things are back. That was quite the point right there for the side out. 4-4-1, four, four, this is the third game of a best of three match. And a reminder that if Dawson and Loon end up winning this match, they're going to play one more game to 15, and that will decide which team gets the gold medal because currently, Cal Yates and Ben Johns are undefeated on the day. Is Sarah Yates going to be Kyle's mixed doubles partner tomorrow? No, Sarah is not his partner tomorrow. Partnering with Mr. Kyle Yates tomorrow is Simone Jardim. Who? Wow, that's uh, <laughs> quite the tandem. <laughs> she just keeps popping up all over the place. Uh. <laughs> uh. You know, we, we talked earlier about um, our project, the Pickleball Coaching International Project, and Sarah Yates actually was one of my helpful uh, volunteers in a bunch of the videos that we did. She just came back from knee surgery. She's back on the men. She's ready to play, and uh, she was a pleasure to work with. Yeah, she's just a great young lady, great pickleball player as well. Well, they have good teachers, the Yates parents, Julie and Larry. They teach beginner classes throughout Lee County back in Florida. Yeah. Mm. Yep, they do a lot for the sport, that's for sure. I owe uh, Kyle a hug from his mom, Julie. She told me to be sure to do that uh, when I saw him. I will get that done for you, Julie. Uh, quick update on the unforced error count. Um, 
Ben, Johns, and Kyle Yates had a lot more than Dawson and Loon did. Uh, however, Dawson and Loon have now raced up to 17 unforced errors compared to 18 from Yates and Johns. So um, they're going to want to stop the momentum of these errors right now. That's maybe why they called the timeout. We've got Ben Johns dancing in the back of the court right well, now. And they're switching sides at 6-4-2 here in the third and decisive mm -hmm. game here of the doubles gold medal match. Yeah, and that's the only time that we do a uh, change is on sides on a uh, two out of three is in the third game. They will switch at six. Other than that, they just switch sides between games one and two. And I don't know in this particular instance how much of a, a difference that will make. At maybe an hour ago when the shade and the sun was a factor, it might have made a big difference, but both ends of the, of the court now in the shade. Yeah, and the conditions are just perfect here tonight. The, everything is calm and still. It's uh, certainly the temperature is not an issue. Wind is not an issue as we thought it might be. No, and no. could be tomorrow. Yeah, we're keeping an eye on that. So 6-4-2, John's with the serve. So Loon and Dawson really seem to be going after Kyle here, making him work. The bet they're making is that they can last longer than he can. And there, Dawson had a chance to win the point, missed it just wide. So now four points away from gold. Mm. So Mr. Scott Lippitz, I see, has joined us. He's one of the uh, most present people on the Pickleball Forum. And uh, free towel service here, Scott, all free. Yep. Melissa, did you end up finding, did you tell us? I can't remember. I know you told us that people could go to pickleballtournaments.com to find out how much money the gold medalists win. Do you know, do you know the number offhand? Um, I can tell you, because I was just on that website, that wonderful pickleballtournaments.com website that has so much information about players and results and hmm. upcoming tournaments, past tournaments. Logan Dawson with a timeout. We'll, we'll, we'll wait with bated breath for that information on the other side of this timeout. 9-4 in the third and decisive game. Back to Las Vegas in a quick moment. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown, Miller Lite, and by Highlands. Back here in Las Vegas, 9-4 in favor of Yates and Johns. Lung and Dawson trying to hang on here and get this to a tiebreaker game. Yeah, so when we were going into break, the question was about the, uh, the uh, prize money. So for men's doubles pro, first place will take home $4,000. That's split between the two players. Second place, $1,500. Third place, 750. That's the same also for the women's pro doubles and the mixed pro doubles. Well, and now Johns and Yates are a single point away from taking home that $4,000 prize. John serving for the match and the championship. Ooh. Oh, and, and he, <laughs> I guess he felt that, he, he thought that one was the one. That was, that was, was going to take home the money. Ben says, I hope that wasn't a $2,000 mistake. And I... Hello, Mr. Peter Hidako. I look forward to going to the inaugural Hawaii Open in January. Very, very excited about that. And working with you too, Peter, for the first time out there. Another pro prize money event on that's been added to the tour. End of January. You can find that out on pickleballtournaments.com. Well played shot mm -hmm. there by Yates and Dawson unable to return it. So now the serve goes back over to Yates and Johns. And Cal Yates with a chance to serve for the gold. Ooh. And there it is, there championship it is. point. And Kyle Yates and Ben Johns. What a great way to it. win the point. 111, 11, 7, 11, 4. And the men's doubles gold. One more look at the final point. You see here, Ben Johns is looking to jump the corner to take that ball, and it's just barely over the net. It's an easy put away with the forehand. So add another gold to the collection of gold that these two guys own already in their careers. Kyle Yates and Ben Johns will have the trophy presentation, and we'll hear from the winners. Coming up next, stay with us from Las Vegas.
The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown. Miller Lights and by Head. And welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. If we could get the monitor turned around, that would be fantastic <laughs> on live TV here. And we are going to make the trophy presentation and the money presentation. So let's get Ben Johns and Kyle Yates over here, along with Jonathan Jossel, the CEO of the Plaza Hotel and Casino, and Grant Garcia, the director of the tournament. Guys, come out over my way. Don't be shy. And uh, we are, we are, we are. We are excited to have you here, Jonathan Jossel. Uh, first things first, let's ask you about the, your decision to have this tournament here. I know Grant was huge, but uh, this has been a big hit, and we've enjoyed having you here so far. Well, firstly, thank you to you guys for being here. Thank you to all the players for being here, and mostly thank you to Grant for putting this on and hosting it and doing such a good job in managing it. So we, we, we have the space. We think it's a perfect amenity for downtown and for Las Vegas to become a destination for pickleball and so we're going to build this every year now all right i'm going to let you guys make a presentation in a moment but first i want to talk to cal yates and ben johns who, who took the gold here and you guys are no strangers to winning gold medals on the pickleball tour uh, but what does it mean to be the inaugural men's doubles champions here in las vegas well i think as the uh the very first las vegas pickleball open uh we're really happy to be the, the champions and uh, i'm sure we're looking forward to coming back next year and defending our title kyle i gotta ask you, you you played this duo earlier in the day in the winner's bracket final and you, you made easy work of it and then they jumped on you in game one here in the championship round uh were you guys maybe a little bit flat after ever to resting and they went through the opportunity bracket um, i wouldn't say that uh our match earlier wasn't really that easy obviously it was hard um i think we're just a little more efficient but we're sitting for a few hours they get a you know a match and they had to sit a little bit but I think they just came in a lot of energy they know like hey we got to beat them twice so we might as well just go out and just you know go right at them right away I think that's what they did and they played really really well um, the entire match but it took us a while to kind of start like playing a little smarter against them and then we kind of figured out some things and had to play really um, really patient with them for sure by the end of your match it was all shade but I saw one point in that first game you kind of lost it in the sun you, you pointed up at the sky a little frustrated yeah it's hard for both teams but the sun was setting and it's an awesome venue but we're on a, we're on a rooftop so you know the sun's coming in so it was hard to see the ball at times but both teams you know have to deal with that though Ben I gotta ask you I know you two are very good friends you've known each other for a long time and in a lot of ways Kyle has been your mentor what does it mean now to be playing alongside him in tournaments like this and being able to achieve the success you guys have had yeah, well, I think, uh, I mean, it's awesome for sure uh, just to kind of see the improvement and uh, see the help he's given me and then uh, kind of get up to the same level so we can play together. I think it's awesome. All right. Well, we're going to get Grant Garcia in here, the tournament director. He's got the uh, trophies and the gold. And, uh, Grant, I'll let you make the presentation. How's that? And uh, gold medal for you. Kyle, congrats. It's a medal or trophy yeah. and a medal. Enjoy. We'll see you guys next year. And Jonathan, you've got the you've got the checks. I got what you really want. The checks. Here we go. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And they're not checks in true casino form. It's cash. Grant, don't go anywhere. Let's get you in here real quick. I want to just ask you. Jonathan mentioned the efforts that you've made to put this tournament on. We talked about it on the broadcast today, but this thing has been top notch in every way, from the prize money to the courts to the way that everybody's been treated, both fans and players. It has been fantastic, and it's got to, I would imagine, mean a lot to you to be getting the positive feedback that we've been hearing. It does. It's great to hear. I mean, we put a lot of work into this tournament. Uh, the hotel staff put a lot of work into it, as well as everybody that helped out and you guys. Um, so we're excited that we were able to put on this great event. Next year, we think it's going to be even better. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate it. We'll see more of you over the weekend. And, and one last thought for you guys. How do you? I know you, you're both getting back to mixed doubles tomorrow. Uh, how, how do you? How do you get? prepared for that you know you're in las vegas so are you able to celebrate tonight or is it going to be all work tonight uh i'm sure we'll celebrate maybe with a good dinner like some sushi uh that sounds really good to me and then uh or the steakhouse for sure um then get some rest and come back tomorrow yeah um i'm definitely gonna go eat I haven't eaten much today so that's kind of my mind i'm gonna hit the casino and see if i can double this on some blackjack <laughs> That, that's exactly what Jonathan likes to hear. All right, guys, go enjoy your night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Gentlemen, we'll see you tomorrow as well. And with that, we're going to take another time out here from Las Vegas. It's been a fantastic day one in Sin City.
The Plaza Hotel and Casino, the official home of the Las Vegas Pickleball Open, also brought to you by Miller Lite and by Franklin, the X40, the official ball of pickleball. Make sure you go to plazahotelcasino.com for more information about this spectacular event and this spectacular location here in Vegas.